Vaccines are a key public health tool, playing a vital role in controlling infectious diseases, preventing between 3.5 to 5 million deaths each year. But how do they work? What are the different types? And what about safety? Let's take a look. Vaccines are not new. Early forms of vaccination were practiced in ancient India, Africa, and China. However, the modern era of vaccination began in the 1700s with the work of Edward Jenner. He catalyzed a global movement that ultimately led to the eradication of smallpox, a deadly disease responsible for killing and disfiguring millions worldwide. So how do vaccines work? To answer that, let's first take a quick look at how the immune system defends the body from pathogens. Pathogens are microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, or fungi that can cause disease directly or by producing toxins. The immune system works using two main mechanisms. The first is innate immunity. This is the first line of defense, providing an initial non-specific response through mechanisms such as physical barriers like the skin or mucous membranes, immune cells like phagocytes and proteins. The second type is adaptive immunity, which is specific to the pathogen and is activated by unique components of the pathogen called antigens. Two key players of adaptive immunity are B cells and T cells. B cells produce antibodies that bind to the antigen, neutralizing them and marking them for destruction by other cells. T cells attack infected cells and coordinate the response. Some of these cells become long-lasting memory cells, enabling the immune system to respond more quickly and effectively if the same pathogen re-enters the body. This is called active immunity. Although the immune system is quite effective, it can take time to respond during the initial infection. This can allow the pathogen to cause illness before the body fully defends itself. This is where vaccines come in. Vaccines mimic the pathogen by presenting a specific antigen that triggers the immune response, creating immunity to that pathogen, but without causing disease. Passive immunity is when a person receives preformed antibodies, for example, from the placenta or through direct administration. While it provides immediate protection, unlike active immunity, its effects are temporary. So how long does active immunity last? Well, it can vary. For some vaccines, it can be many years and some even a lifetime. However, additional or booster doses may be needed to maintain immunity. This is because of several reasons, such as certain types of vaccines producing a strong immune response, immunity decreasing over time naturally, people's immune systems weakening due to age or illness, or changes in the pathogen, such as new variants. Vaccines are given based on their suitability for the individual and after considering the risks and benefits. Vaccines can protect more than just the individual. When enough people in a population are immune, the spread of the disease can slow or stop offering indirect protection to those who aren't immune. This is called herd immunity. Let's have a look at how vaccines are classified. As we've seen, vaccines work by introducing an antigen to the immune system. Vaccines can be classified into different types based on how it's presented. An inactivated vaccine is one in which the pathogen has been killed. A live, attenuated vaccine has a weakened pathogen that is less virulent. Subunit vaccines contain specific antigens of the pathogen. These antigens can be proteins, polysaccharides, or both. Nucleic acid vaccines contain genetic material that instructs the body to produce the antigen. The genetic material can be introduced to the body directly or using a harmless virus called a virus vector. A toxoid vaccine uses an inactivated toxin to stimulate the immune system to generate a response against the toxin. In addition to the active component, vaccines may have other substances in very small quantities that are used in the manufacturing process or added to keep them safe, stable, and more effective. These will depend on the specific vaccine and may include a liquid diluent to dilute the vaccine to the proper concentration, adjuvants to enhance the immune response, stabilizers and surfactants to keep the vaccine stable and viable, and preservatives or antibiotics to prevent contamination. They may also include small amounts of residuals, such as egg proteins, from the manufacturing process and will vary depend on the methods used. Another important consideration in keeping vaccines viable is temperature. Vaccines must be stored within a temperature range that is specific to the vaccine to stay viable and effective. This temperature range should be maintained all the way from the place of manufacture to the point of giving the vaccine. 
This is called a cold chain. If vaccines are exposed to temperatures outside the recommended range, it's called a cold chain breach. This can lead to the vaccine being ineffective or less effective. Breaches can be prevented by implementing a robust system for maintaining and monitoring temperatures. Now let's take a look at vaccine safety. Like medicines, vaccines undergo a rigorous testing process to ensure that they're effective and safe. It starts from the development of the vaccine in the laboratory and progresses to the human clinical trials. The vaccine is tested in progressively larger groups of people across several phases before receiving approval from regulatory authorities. After approval, vaccines are routinely monitored for ongoing safety and effectiveness. Like any other medicine, vaccines can sometimes cause side effects. An adverse event following immunization refers to any negative health event that occurs after receiving a vaccine. Most are mild and resolve quickly. They include local reactions such as redness, swelling, or soreness at the injection site, as well as systemic symptoms like fever or general malaise. In rare cases, vaccines may cause uncommon or serious adverse events. The most serious immediate reaction is anaphylaxis, a life-threatening allergic reaction that requires immediate treatment. Adverse events are investigated by health departments or regulatory agencies. They assess whether the event was related to the vaccine, due to factors such as errors in administration like incorrect dosing, or linked to characteristics of the recipient. They also determine if the event was coincidental. If a safety concern is confirmed, the vaccine is withdrawn from use. And that's a brief overview of vaccines. For more information about vaccines, please have a chat with your healthcare provider.